We got to talk about the Suns, man. They started at one and two. It looked like, oh, yeah, obviously overreaction to judge them on three games. But it's hard to repeat success in the NBA. Especially when you're the guy who has the most influence on your team is aging. I love Chris Paul, but he's not getting any younger. So everybody's saying, oh, they started at one and two. Oh, man. Looking for a bust here. And they say, huh? 17 game win streak. The Suns are playing unreal right now. I think. I think the worry that people had at the beginning of the season is extremely premature. Like at the time, we were like, "Oh, this has like actual like something that it holds value." And I don't know why we thought it held value at all. Because I was curious, so I went back and I looked at their past records. And since the beginning of the NBA bubble, when they went eight and zero in that bubble. This record that I'm about to tell you includes the bubble, includes last season's regular season, includes last year's playoff run, and includes the beginning of this season. So, since the bubble has started, the Phoenix Suns have a total record of 91 wins and 32 losses. That's including the regular season, the entire regular season last year. That's including all of the playoffs last year. When you're going up against the top teams in the NBA. Exactly. They have a, it's a 73.9 win percentage since the beginning of the bubble. So looking back on it now, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, but looking back and being, oh, they started one and three. Oh, everybody freak out. The people that just won the Western Conference finals are one and three. There's need to worry four games into an 82 season. It was extremely premature. The streak that they're on right now, and they're looking to extend it to 18 games tonight when they play Detroit. And I, I think they will. I mean, no offense to Detroit, but right now they're Detroit. But their first win for this streak came on October 30th. And it is December 2nd, and they still haven't lost. So that means they went the entire month of November without losing a game. I went to look at their numbers in this 17-game win streak, and they have so many wins that I can't even go back and find the numbers for all their wins in a row. When you go back and you look at stats on NBA.com, you can go up to the past recent 15 games. So I have 15 game, the last 15 game stats here, but they've been winning so long, even most data places just like, yeah, probably won't happen. I mean, that this win streak is incredible because they're playing really good basketball. Six of their wins came without their starting center, DeAndre Ayton. And he was a key presence in them reaching 17 wins the other night and beating the Warriors. So, I mean, it, it was extremely premature looking back on it to say, oh, one and three, we have to panic. One of the most interesting things about the Suns is not their offense. Like, the offense is great, but I was talking with one of my friends yesterday. And he was like, you know why the Suns are fun to watch? Because they're one of the few teams that actually plays elite defense. Their defense, pretty good. They've got some nice pieces that just fill it out like... Yeah, Devin Booker's not a great defender, but I could give you a list of guys on the Suns who can guard the ball. Look what they did to Golden State. They put Steph Curry in the torture chamber. Looked like five Lou Dortz on the court at times, just because they held their own against Golden State, who was doing crazy things, and they shut Steph Curry down. And they lost Devin Booker in that game. Devin Booker's out with an injured hamstring now, and they still were able to finish that game and beat the Warriors. When I was looking at that box score from that game, I was just curious because they had Mikhail Bridges on Steph Curry for most of the game. So I was just curious about if the minutes matched up, if it was a thing that if Steph's in the game, Mikhail's in the game, things of that nature. And I went back and I looked, and Mikhail Bridges played 41 minutes that game. He played 41 out of 48 minutes, and he led the Suns in minutes. I didn't. I would have expected Chris Paul to lead the Suns in minutes. Maybe DeAndre Ayton, since he was a clear focal point in their game plan going in. But no, it was Mikhail Bridges and his elite defense that led that team in minutes. And he only finished with like two points or four points or something. Like he wasn't even out there shooting the ball that much. He was out there playing lockdown defense for 41 minutes, which is absolutely insane. And if you want to talk about defenders, you got to talk about clutch time too. Like I call it put up or shut up time personally. Like when things get close, it's either put up or shut up time. Like no more talking, it's just time to do it. And the Suns have five of the top six clutch time plus minus leaders in the NBA right now. At sixth is DeAndre Ayton, who's a plus 27 
in clutch time. And I should I should uh, note that clutch time is any time that the game is within five points, under five minutes left in the game. That is what the NBA defines as clutch time. So DeAndre Ayton in that time frame this season is a plus 27. The only son that's in the top, the only son, excuse me, the only player not a son in the top six is at five, and that's Wendell Carter for the Orlando Magic of all teams, who's a plus 28. But then it goes right back to four straight sons, Devin Booker at four, plus 38. Jay Crowder at third, plus 39. Mikhail Bridges, plus 41. And then, I mean, Mr. Clutch Time himself is Chris Paul at plus 42. I mean, I don't think that dude fails anybody in the clutch. I mean, anytime t- somebody talks about Chris Paul, the only thing I can think about is the clutch floater he hit off one leg when he was hurt in 2015 in the playoffs to beat the defending champ Spurs when he was with the Clippers. I mean, that's one of my favorite shots in NBA history, and it just shows how clutch he truly is. But if you want to talk about defense and clutch together at the same time, let's talk about Jay Crowder. Because when that game was getting close the other night in Phoenix, of all people to hit two straight daggers on Golden State, it was Jay Crowder that hit two straight threes and called Golden State to call a timeout, and it kind of put the game out of reach for him. So this team is really well-rounded. From top to bottom, like you mentioned, like they go out and they get dudes like people trash on Alfred Payton. But personally, I'm kind of a fan. I like his playmaking. He's a defender. He doesn't need to score the ball. I don't think everybody in the NBA needs to score the ball. That's kind of why I'm a fan of Ben Simmons as well. But that's a whole entire different topic. But like I said, it's a deep roster top to bottom. They went out. They got Landry Shamit for more shooting. Like they just are a well knitted basketball team. And. That's obviously why they're on this 17-game win streak, and by the end of the night, I expect it to be an 18-game win streak. Yeah, they're special. They got a lot of things going for them, and it's crazy that this team missed the playoffs one year. Obviously, they went 8-0 in the bubble and just barely missed the playoffs because of that 8-0 run, but then Chris Paul comes in. We know what CP3 can do for a team. Look what he did for the Thunder. This dude changed the, ge- the game for the Suns, and they keep adding in more pieces. And that's just what Chris Paul does. I mean, Suns, Thunder, turned around the Clippers, turned around the Hornets. Like, he, whenever he shows up, people win. It's that simple. It's true. I like Chris Paul, so I'm happy with it. But the Suns team, man, I, the Suns fans that are in my life are some of the most annoying people. So I don't want to give the Suns, like, too much credit. You know who you are. Doubt you're listening. But they, they are looking like a very, very special team. But never know what can happen come April, come May, come June, July in the NBA. I could still see this team being a second-round exit. Yeah, I could too. I mean, in the Western Conference, it's a mess right now. I mean, <laughs> there's so many people that are, like, at 500, a game below, a game above. Uh, it's... It's somewhat nerve-wracking to watch as a Western Conference team, of a, of a fan of a Western Conference team who's trying to actually win right now, co- opposed to the Thunder who are tanking. So it's a little bit of a different stake there. But, yeah, like I think third is Utah. They're 14-7 and seven last time I checked. But then after that, it's like the Mavericks who are like a game above 500. The Clippers are in the mix. They're like the sixth seed right now. They dropped to 500 last night. So it's a mess in the Western Conference. Anybody can beat anybody. And if you just have a few bad days, a few bad games, you can get bounced in the Western Conference in the playoffs. So while they are hot right now, they are a good team, anything can happen. And I agree, I could see them being a second-round exit because somebody has to lose. Yeah, the Warriors are a great team. The Warriors might be the title favorites right now just because look what they're doing without Clay. Like, the Warriors are nice, and we can we don't need to get into the Warriors, but Warriors are a team who could take the Suns out. Right now, they wouldn't be playing in the second round if the season ended right now. Warriors could take them out. Quinn Snyder is a great coach. We could see what he could do with the Jazz. And even the Clippers last year gave the Suns trouble in a series without Kawhi Leonard. Like, yeah, it went six games, and the main thing in that series was, this. this is the thing about the Suns. They have just about every answer possible to win a series. Oh, you don't have a big guy? We're going to give it to DeAndre Ayton. Oh, you have a dude who can't guard on the perimeter? We're going to give it to Devin Booker. Oh, you want to run this exact system to take out Booker and Ayton? We're going to have Chris Paul pick you apart. Like, they have an answer for everything. And they also have a great coach in Monty Williams who just does a phenomenal job 
absolutely phenomenal job. And you could see that he has built trust in that organization with his players and that they trust him, he trusts them, and they just win basketball games with that trust, basically. So it's really, really fun to watch him play basketball because of that. <laughs> 